As you may already know, for reasons out of my control and even my company's control, I lost my first ever full-time engineering job because of the recession that we're in. I was obviously sad at first, but it's been some time now and I've gone over it and I'm back job hunting again. But looking back, there are definitely a few things I wish I could have done differently, so I'm gonna share that with you. First, when things were good and I was happily employed, I still should have been open to work and new opportunities. The reason I say this is because obviously you never truly know what could happen. I would occasionally get LinkedIn messages from recruiters saying they like my experience from what they saw on LinkedIn and would like to interview me for a role. But at the time, because I was happily employed, I'd respond by saying something like, thanks for reaching out, however I'm happily employed and I'm not looking to leave at the moment. But that was a bit of a mistake because instead I should have just interviewed with them and say how well I do for two reasons. First, it allows me to keep my resume up to date with updated bullet points and experiences. That way, if anything were to happen and I need it, I don't have to stress about making another one. Second, by interviewing with other companies, I truly have nothing to lose. Worst case, I get rejected, but I get some solid interview experience out of it. And best case, I get a new connection that can allow me to get a better, higher paying job now or in the future. You see, one of the best things that can help you succeed when job hunting is to share with the interviewer some of your past work experiences. So for that reason, you need to have a portfolio of your past work. To do this, you need pictures and screenshots of all the projects you did at work. So one thing I do regret is not taking enough pictures from my time working as an engineer at Serverbotics. I always said that if I ever leave this company during my last week of work, I'll just take pictures of everything that I was working on. But I obviously lost a job without any notice, so I couldn't even do that. On Thursday, I was being complimented and told I was doing a great job on my previous projects, and all of a sudden on Friday, I was let go. So I don't care if you work for the most stable company in the world, keep track of all your work, projects, take a bunch of pictures and screenshots of everything. Obviously without breaking any NDAs. Moving on, during tough times like this, it's usually every man for himself. I know this because obviously I scroll through LinkedIn and I see the stories of other people talking about their experiences with their work. And it taught me in this corporate world, you should really only be focused on yourself. Because if you don't focus on yourself and care about yourself, then who will? Here are some stories I've seen. First, someone getting a job offer one day, then moving to a new city to start their new job. And then within his first week of his job, gets laid off in a brand new city that he just moved to for this job. Second, someone losing their job completely out of the blue after giving a company over two years of their life and hard work, even though a day before the layoff, they had been given an offer to move up to a new role at the company. Third, I've never seen this one personally, but I have heard that some companies will give you a job offer, but it's contingent on the fact that they get all their paperwork sorted out, and it's also contingent on the fact that you leave your current company. But once you leave your company, they'll end up ghosting you. Now, moving on, when you get your first job after graduating, it's easy to treat it like you're still in university. Working late, working long hours, or maybe putting in some extra hours over the weekend. And you can justify it by saying this is nothing compared to how much work I did in university. And you also start to think you need to do these sacrifices because everyone around you is doing it and that's the only way to succeed. And no one will explicitly say this, but if you're a younger engineer that's unmarried and has no kids, then your coworkers will assume there's no reason for you not to work extra. So I definitely regret believing in this and falling for this kind of peer pressure. I definitely should have set clear boundaries and maintain a better work-life balance. Now to improve my work-life balance and just be more productive overall, it definitely takes a bit of practice and it's nice to have a place that you can go to to learn more. There are so many websites out there to help with that, one of them being Skillshare, who are sponsoring this part of the video. If you haven't heard, Skillshare is an online learning community that has a ton of courses about lots of different topics like project management, productivity, and time management. They're all really inspiring classes, especially if you wanna learn stuff related to personal growth. Personally for me, one of my favorite classes that I've tried on Skillshare is Productivity for Creators, Systems, Organization, and Workflow by Ali Abdal. I have my own systems to manage my workflow and stay productive, but it's always interesting to see how other people manage their own work. Since you can always learn something new from them that you can implement in your daily work life. One of the things he talks about that I really like is the concept of productive procrastination. And the cool thing is I also got to try out that class for free because usually if someone's sponsored by Skillshare, they give you a link that gives you a free month of Skillshare. And I also have a link that you can check out if you wanna try that month for free. Maybe try that course or a different course, whatever you want. The first 1,000 people to use that link will get one month free of Skillshare, just like I did when I was first starting to use it. Anyways, moving on, the in-office nine to five work culture that we have 
is not very productive in my opinion for engineers. No matter what type of engineering you're in, you'll spend a lot of long hours in front of a computer. Some people may argue, no, that's not true. Mechanical engineers spend so much time using their hands. If you really look into how much time you spend using your hands at work, it's like maybe 20 to 40% of the time, depending on the company you work for. The remaining 60 to 80% of the time, you're either in meetings, creating presentations, documentation, making drawings, creating designs, or maybe doing some tests using some software. All these things are done on your laptop, so you can theoretically do them from anywhere around the world and still get all your work done. You don't need to be in an office by your laptop to get it done. I find that I'm most productive when I work from home because I can truly focus and get into this deep state of work. That's because there's no one coming up to me to distract me and talk to me. When you go to the washroom or the cafeteria, I don't have to have small talk with my coworkers, I can just focus on work because that small talk really builds up over time. But don't get me wrong, I still think there is a benefit to being in an office, but I think the most effective way of work should be hybrid, where you work in the office sometimes and at home or remote sometimes. For example, if you need to build something with your hands and share it and present it to others, then yeah, you definitely need to go to an office and interact with other people. But going to the office should be more project-based instead of time-based, as in only go if you need to. For example, when I worked at Tesla, there were literally days where I'd spend it purely in virtual meetings. And the other people in those meetings will be sitting either next to me or across from me or just really close to my desk. Literally, instead of standing up and talking to each other in real life, we'd put our headphones in and just talk to each other virtually and present to each other virtually. So if that's all I did that day, there was genuinely no purpose of me coming into the office. I could have just done these meetings from home since we're all talking to each other over a laptop anyways. I could have saved so much time by not commuting to the office that day. So basically hybrid work where some days you work in the office and some days you work remotely or at home should be a priority when job hunting because I found personally that I'm much more productive with that method of work. Next, it's better to over communicate than to under communicate. At work, they have performance reviews every six months where they evaluate the work that you've been doing so far. Sometimes you may be doing good things going above and beyond and your manager just doesn't know. So you should always be communicating with them everything you're doing and don't just assume they know what you're up to. I'd usually do this with weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings that I had with my manager. We'd have this huge Excel tracker that sort of tracks all the projects that I'm working on no matter how small or big these projects are. That way after six months when he's evaluating my performance, he can see all the stuff that I accomplished in that time. And you'll be surprised how easy it is to forget some of the things you did like two months ago. Next, sometimes at work, you can fall into what I like to call the pit of meetings, where you find yourself just spending your work days in back-to-back -back meetings. Some of them you don't even say anything in, or you may talk for like two or three minutes, but the meeting is like an hour long. That's time out of your day that's honestly just wasted. Although you can't technically work while you're in a meeting, I do find that it becomes really hard to focus on your work when you have a meeting and someone talking in your ear. So I know this is easier said than done and it can be intimidating, but if you don't gain anything out of a meeting, then let your manager or the meeting organizer know that we don't have to waste that much time on useless meetings. Or maybe you can learn from them how you can actually be more useful in that meeting so you don't feel like you're wasting your time. But if you barely say anything in those meetings, I'm sure they wouldn't mind if you're not in it. Now to actually make good use of my time when working, I like time blocking. I'll look at my day from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and break down exactly what I need to do by the hour. So at work, this is what my day would look like. I'd start off my day with jujitsu training at 6 a.m., then come home and have breakfast. Afterwards, I'm at my desk doing some design work, have some meetings, then more design work before lunch. When I'm done with lunch, I can work on building a prototype or work on some presentations or documentations for the work I did earlier in the morning. After work, I'd hit the gym, have dinner, then do some YouTube work to end off the day. Doing so just helps me reduce procrastination and makes me realize how much time I actually have during my day. Also notice how in my time blocking diagram, I like to do my design work first thing in the morning. That's because it tends to be the most challenging task for me for that day. And I know that if I schedule it later in the day, I will subconsciously take longer with the tasks I have before it so I don't get to it that day. My brain will work in mysterious ways sometimes to make me lazy. So I just need to know how to counteract that. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video where I share with you a day in my life as an engineer, or check out that video where I share with you how engineers build products from scratch. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.